humanity will never be the best if we don't allow each other to figure out what their best is or who their real person is. That's the only way we'll figure out how to continue growing as a culture. Welcome to A Sister's Love, the podcast that help women who are healing by having those deep conversations, giving practical advice and words of encouragement. Come on, let's talk about it. Hello, my beautiful sisters. Welcome back to another episode of a Sisters Love Podcast. On today's episode of a Sister Love Podcast, we have a beautiful guest. Her name is Rachel, and she's on here talking about how she had to shift her life due to a health issue and how that shift of her life changed her life and hope her love herself and explore the person that she truly wants to be and do what truly resonates with her heart. But before we dive deep into that, I would like to introduce myself. Hello. I am Rose. I'm your host here at A Sister's Love Podcast. And I am just one woman with one voice trying to help other women heal from trauma. And through my own experience, I am providing women with resources. Um, I am providing them with a community of women who truly understand them and help them navigate their healing journey. So if you are a woman who is on her healing journey or is looking for a safe haven or a place to just be you, to heal, to love yourself, and just to talk to people who understand you and get you, then you are in the right place. I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications so you never miss another episode of A Sister's Love Podcast. We have a beautiful guest. Her name is Rachel, and I'm going to allow her to introduce herself and tell us a little bit more about her and what she did. Hey, everybody. My name is Rachel Bennett. I recently changed my name. You can look me up as Rachel Adams. I've been with Airstream and being an Airstream enthusiast for almost a decade now. I recently had um, some health issues, and instead of working for corporate, I now still stay with Airstream, um, but currently at Airstream Stays at Beauty Place, helping other people physically enjoy their stays. So a little bit different than a transaction. So great to be here. I would love to help everybody. What exactly is Airstream? Airstream is the silver travel trailer that was created around 1930. The reason it's so important to me is that Airstream stands for resilience um, in my perspective, as well as um, style for decades it has. So they last a very long time. They're travel trailers. They're that silver bullet that you might see going down the road. Maybe your grandparents had one. Um, They're also in a lot of movies. Matthew McConaughey is an enthusiast of them. So exactly how did that help you with your health, your issue that you was facing? Yeah, so I think it was more of a... Um, metaphor for what I needed. So for many, many years of my life, I've done a lot of different things. But when I was working um, in sales, I was one of the number one producers in a in a big span of the country. And I took it super seriously to the point where I made it my home, right, my identity. And then when I got sick, because I wasn't necessarily taking care of myself, myself as well as others, um, I had to really face the problem. So what I realized was the reason I loved Airstream now still working for them was because I really enjoyed the freedom that my customers had and the sense of community that they had. However, I was lacking that and I was lacking the sense of uh, discovery and adventure that they were having. So that is why I go on another um, end of the spectrum where helping people actually do the camping experience because that's the part that I decided I wanted to do. So it went from super corporate to helping a smaller business. Smaller business, like doing what? Like helping them build community? Yeah. So RV uh, park, like Beauty Place RV Resort, um, they're who have the Airstream stays. They actually purchased their Airstreams from Airstream of Austin. And so I was able to kind of help them learn how to use them and they got more into the camping community and as we started being friends i realized that the people that are guests at her resort are incredible humans Um, i had been traveling with the airstream club for a long time so a lot of them are supportive Um, and it just creates a different sense of community maybe different than the traditional american dream and i stand for that i want people to be free uh to live whatever journey they feel is better for them. And I'm on that path myself. So your health issues is what led you on that path to just finding a better solution to dealing with your issues that you are facing? Actually, my health issues led me down a 
completely different path, even though it sounds like it's similar. I was working, like I said, in a corporate environment um, that was fine, but it isn't necessarily all of me. Um, and I believe that a lot of women, you know, and men, but we get told what our limitations are, what our identities should be. And when I lost that identity, it, it was something that had to be lost. I was falling on the ground on my knees. You know, I had a droop in my face, a pain that had been there for almost eight years, and I had to face the problem. Um, it resulted in a heart procedure, um, had some small brain hemorrhage. So it it definitely was my body was telling me that the way I was living my life was taking a toll and I needed to make, uh, it was the fork in the road, right? Like, what do you do? So I spent about seven months going in and out of hospitals. Actually, it kind of continued longer than that. And I didn't want to give up. It was this like, I believe I am this person. That's the only thing I can ever be. I am the salesperson and that's the only way I can still be with Airstream. Turns out that's not true. Uh, I could be part of the community. And from that, I started uh, researching other countries to even to, you know, live in. And I want to keep it light enough to do that after, you know, developing an identity that was, you know, bigger property, a pool, uh, the the American dream. Yeah. I realized that Airstream could, you know, it could definitely serve as my American dream. I could travel in the United States and I could, you know, go live abroad. That's awesome. That's totally, I totally understand that because we as women in a society that we think that we have to put ourselves in a box of what we're supposed to be doing, how we're supposed to live our life. And then we never actually consider of consider ourselves of how we actually want to live our life. We're basing our life experience off of what it should look like and not exactly of what we want it to look like. And because of that, that can cause health issues because it's the, the build up stress that our mental is not able to take because we wasn't sure it wasn't meant for us to take on if that makes sense we wasn't meant to take on that amount of stress so when we do when we're in environments that we don't supposed to be in because it's not conducive to who we are it caused our body to react to that environment absolutely and that's the underlying issues that come out way faster than maybe they would have had to mm -hmm. um and that's that really like getting honest with yourself and I've noticed in, in my life, I've always wanted to be number one. I don't think that's a problem unless you want to be number one and you don't know why or where you're yeah. going because then you're just spinning at number one on the hamster wheel. And I don't know if you're really doing yourself justice. I, I wasn't to myself. I barely saw my home built a very expensive pool that I've swam in a couple of times it didn't make any sense. And so when I asked myself, like, who are you? Because I've gone through a series of things in my life. I have somewhat been a phoenix and I, I keep going through the ashes. And I'm like, well, do you want to continue thinking that resilience and strength is holding it all in and doing what everyone thinks and that looks like strength? Or is resilience really dropping all the baggage, dropping everybody's opinion and being yourself? Because I believe that's the hardest thing to be. It is. I totally agree with that because it's so much easier to pretend. It's so much easier to copy someone else. It takes real strength and real self-power and self-control to actually stand in who you are and what you want and reject the things that don't align with you because it comes back with a lot of judgment, re people, resistance, and you lose people and you lose things. So, and with that being said, that we as American people or people in general, we just don't feel like doing the work and we don't feel like it's necessary. If it's easy and it's comfortable, we stay there. So a lot of people live in their comfort zone and to be authentic to yourself, you have to step outside of that. And once you realize you step in outside of that, that will become more comfortable than actually staying in this comfort zone. And people don't realize that it's actually discomforting to stay in your comfort zone because you are not being true to self and that cause stress, stress and health Absolutely. issues and all these other things that is hindering you to blossom and grow into the person that you really want to be or explore the person that you want to be. Absolutely. And the regret of, of never knowing who you could have been, mm -hmm. you know, I think I found out more about myself while I was in hospitals and in Airbnbs waiting for hospitals to, you know, put me on the list or get me in, or, you know, I went to Cleveland clinic. I was all over the place. Um, my husband and I, we've only been married a little over two years. So the second year of our marriage, you know, 
I was in the hospital after being, you know, very successful, very strong. I had a very, uh, almost a cold, uh, you know, insides uh, about certain things because I wasn't allowing myself to one, get hurt, um, to face some of those adversities that would lead me to a better destination. So I feel like women, you know, once we feel like we've got stability, we're really, really scared to let it go because we've had, you know, and not all, but a lot of women have had a lot of trauma um, in our generation, uh, especially we were taught, you know, you have to do it all. So you're the husband, you're the wife, you're the the mom, you're the babysitter, you're the cleaner, you're the maid, you're the you're also the businessman, you're everything in today's society. And it it just becomes this world that you don't know if you want to live in anymore. Um, and to me, I had to look at what I would regret and what I would regret was not taking a chance on myself. Yeah. I totally agree with that. Like I great. I'm happy that you brought up the point about women being everything for everyone. And we forget to be something for us ourselves. And a lot of people don't, they see when we experience trauma, they see trauma as something big and great, like domestic violence or a car accident or something really traumatic happening to you, but it is micro trauma. And that in itself is traumatic. Like just being so much and doing so much and just not having time to actually sit down and breathe or just follow your dream because everybody expects you to be something or be do something and you don't even have time to do something for yourself is really traumatic and i want the women to realize like you might not have this big giant trauma that everybody talks about or you're, you might not have been abandoned by your parents, you could have had good parents and all this stuff. So you just think that what you're going through is normal and is micro trauma th that we need to talk about and understand that these little things do add up and it can cause you to lose yourself also. Absolutely. And if you have some history of more trauma, um, I feel like probably a lot of us do, even if we bury it, but if you have a history of trauma, all these little things that add up where you're not being true to yourself or you're, you know, it's like the, they say the chipping away, right? The things that chip away at you, it tends to bring back up those feelings. And then you're blindsided by emotions that you didn't know were hiding, you know, as you get attacked by these little needles of life, right? Um, and I think we just got to ask ourselves the question, like, is it worth it to hold on to the things that we're holding on to? Do they serve the purpose? Um, is it my greater good? Or am I just scared, right, financially or mentally of abandonment or change? And I've recently decided that change is one of the most special things we have. And I think women can adapt so easily to change and, you know, in yeah. general, opposed to a man. And I've seen it. Um, women can do amazing things. I think, yeah, I, I totally agree. Like when women get stuck, I, well, I, I, I'm get, I get kind of confused because like I, I, I adapt real quick. Like it's just part of my day to day life. And I don't think women actually realize and sit down and understand that they are, that we adapt so fast and we can change and we get, we're problem solvers so much. But I think the problem is that we are problem solvers to self, not to self, to others, not to self. So it's easier to do it outward, not inward. Yeah. So when it, it when it's time for us to sit with ourselves and shift the the shift the mindset to to us and help us, it's it's not as hard. It's not as easy because we have to do the work. It's yeah. easier to tell other people what to do, how to do, how to adapt, how to switch up a situation to make the situation more comfortable for other people because it's not requiring you to do the actual shifting of that 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 work you know what i mean and when it, we look inward we have to do the work so yeah. adapting and changing it, that could be the biggest reason why it's harder for us to adapt and to change because it requires us to sit with self and to analyze ourselves and to love ourselves to actually do the work for us and that means letting go with some people letting go with some expectation expectations that people have for us and actually saying no and putting us first and most women that's hard for us to do because we are moms we are business people mm -hmm. women. we are workers we are everybody everything to everybody so it's hard for us to tell them people no because we're scared that they won't look love us the same or they won't accept what we're doing and then we have to face judgment mm -hmm. and we have to feel like they're blaming us or you know just feeling like shit pretty much because 
we want to put ourselves first. And that's like a strong emotion, especially for a mom. When you mm-hmm. have to tell your kids, no, like mommy needs to do this for me. And then they look at you like you've destroyed their world or you're not showing up as the best mom that you can be. And you know that you you know put yourself first is what it needs to be, but it's still not easy. Absolutely. And that's why I promote that uh, travel, right? That travel is important because that's a consistent, especially with people that Airstream, they have a consistent change of atmosphere, environment, and they continuously bring their wonderful attitude to where they're going. And so that's what makes Airstream stays so beautiful. Um, you can rely on those. So you have that sense of stability. They're resilient, but they allow you to change your environment. And I think metaphorically, that's what I'm doing as a human. And I think that women should uh, feel comfortable being bold, making big leaps, you know, metaphorically or in real life, dropping the baggage, dropping all the weight and entering atmospheres and seeing how they do in other ones. You know, the worst thing that can happen is you just go back and start again where you were. Yeah. At least you know what was to be, right? That's true. And are these, are they family friendly? Absolutely. I have friends that their family stays in them. They homeschool in them and they go all over the place. Um, We use ours really as a pool house right now where we go to rallies, um, which is get togethers. What's so special about the brand Airstream. That's why it's, I'm not, I like all RVing, but this particular uh, RV is special to me because of the nostalgic uh, sense being from the 1930s, uh, but also They have a huge sense of community. So children, dogs, that's all super important. And these people come from all different walks of life. Um, But for some reason, they can all agree on the freedom of the open road. Totally get it. So it's like, no matter where you are or who you are, we can all come together and just build community and just heal and be together and just be as one. Yeah, they showed me family that I maybe at one point was very disconnected from. You know, I'm from New York. I live in Texas. I was pretty much on my own as a young kid. I even did a lot of bouncing around as a child from couches, et cetera. (laughs) So I found a lot of nurture and comfort in the community. Even as an adult, they teach me every single day what, you know, kindness looks like. Whether it's helping each other back in to actually like when they're at home, letting people that don't have what they have. Like we had an uh, ice storm or maybe just a a freeze, right? In Austin area. And we had a little campfire get together at Beauty Place RV Resort. And um, some of my friends that are Airstreamers that I I look up to so much, um, they were there and they invited one of the guests to come to their house because they were, they didn't have, um, an RV that was quite as, um, weather friendly. Right. Yeah. So they, they immediately invited her over with their child and it just seemed like a beautiful gift that we were able to get together and help each other out. Moments like that are just priceless. Yeah. When you are, you are in a space where people understand you and people are compassionate and people are really just genuinely trying to help people and just make sure everyone is good in the community instead of you're like being around spaces where you're unsure of people's attentions. Absolutely. It gives you a space where you can trust and you can open up and you can feel like you could be vulnerable and not feel like you could be judged. Yeah. That's like the biggest place, the biggest problem where a lot of people like, um, or, or on a healing journey or in general in life that we get stuck or we get locked back into situations because we're scared to be vulnerable. We're scared to open up. We're scared to allow people in because we're not sure of their attentions. And yeah. we can be in a space where people, you can watch people be genuine. Even if yeah. you're not opening up yet, it gives you an opportunity to see what that looks like. And if you want to do it, you have the opportunity to. Absolutely. I was so inspired by my own losses while I was um, getting more and more uncomfortable with the way that my body physically felt, you know, in and out of hospitals, poking and prodding at me. And I was so inspired by the fact that it was actually happening. I mean, it was an opportunity. Was it one of the hardest times in my life? Absolutely. And I've had some questionable times in my life, but 
this was really difficult because I was really stressing out my identity as a human being. Like I was holding on to something and at the same time I was throwing it away. And that's really, really hard, you know, spending so many years of your life being one of the best at something and then deciding you're going to reinvent yourself. I was, it was like, I had the devil and the angel, right? Yeah. And one was like, get better. Your health is first. There's something out there for you other than this. Just stop it. Like this is the fork in the road. So I was inspired by stories and things that I read about other uh, successful people that had been creative and followed their dreams. You know, th even the, the Colonel from Kentucky Fried Chicken does it later in life. Right. And then yeah. you look at people like Katy Perry and, and you don't, maybe you don't know their story. I started reading it and I'm like, okay, I am inspired. So I, what I really want to do is inspire other people to be bold like that, find themselves, whether it's in their sales, whether it's in their careers or like my career was sales. But if it's not in that, you know, you can be bold in your decision to move somewhere, your decision to marry someone, your decision to leave someone, uh, your decisions. And I think as a woman, we, we get burnt out on the day to day, like I said, the hamster wheel, and we're maybe not always making bold decisions that are our true selves that make us happy. We're called selfish for some reason. Um, if we're making bold decisions that we believe will be in the end, our happiness, right? I totally believe that nobody can be their best. Um, our humanity will never be the best if we don't allow each other to figure out what their best is or who their real person is. That's the only way we'll figure out how to, I think, uh, how to continue growing as a culture. I totally, I totally agree with that. Can you share with us some ways that helped you get through that? Absolutely. So I was very lucky when I was younger. Um, I actually had a situation that's pretty controversial right now in Texas. So I won't say it out loud, but it was a really hard time when I was 19, around that age. And I was able to find uh, some relief and release in the Ananda Margos because I met a beautiful woman in Asheville, North Carolina named Josephine. She could sense that I had some, you know, heavy pain inside. Um, and she asked me at the time, I, you know, had issues with opiates. It followed me from being young. And uh, she asked me, you know, you want to get high, baby. And she was, she was from New York as well as I was. And she spoke uh, Spanish. She was Puerto Rican, I believe. Um, and I was like, how do you, how do you know that? Right. And she said, come over, come over here. And I went, you know, on the other side of the store, which was called Cosmic Vision. And she took me to the back and she told me about yoga. This was, you know, been like almost 20 years now or something. So 15, I, I was you know, kind of new to it. I had an idea when I was a kid of yoga, but I didn't understand the scientific benefits. Clearly, uh, I knew it was a fad and it was cool, right? And uh, I already was vegetarian, so I'd been in some of my crowds. But she taught me um, the science of, and especially like Ashtanga yoga, things like that. Um, and mantra, right? I was never a religious person. I would say more spiritual and their mantras I keep with me. Um, and so when I did get physically ill, I hadn't done yoga in so long because my brain was so warped around make money, make money, be number one, make money, right? I had let go that beautiful space where I was humbled and um, I, I knew what mattered, right? So I had to like go back to the roots of that. And I remembered my mantra then that she taught me because I had a lot of fear then too. And that's somewhat, somewhat of a reason why some people use opiates, right? It's fear, it's numbing your pain, not dealing with it necessarily. Um, and so she helped me completely stop that by yoga and saying, sin miedo, sin miedo, without fear. I've got it tattooed on my foot even. So I remembered that experience when I was losing weight significantly, um, a different situation, right, in my adult years, but still getting put on medications that I wasn't sure were good for me, but they were tr they were trying, yeah. right? Um, but it's, it's not necessarily the perfect thing to do in every situation, and some can argue that, but when I look at the, you know, repercussions of some of those medications, it's like this could be making it worse potentially. So I started to do my yoga again every day and say, sin miedo, sin miedo, 
And I really think, and, and also the mantras of reminding yourself, I am, are, are great. And people talk about it a lot. But if you have a memory from your past of, because we have history of getting over things, we all do. I think it can be any mantra from a memory where you remember being strong. And I remember being strong with her and just saying, looking in each other's eyes and saying, sin miedo, sin miedo, sin miedo. And it it really helped. Just those words, I feel like they went inside every cell of my body. That is awesome. I I thought about that before, but I never consider actually doing it, like go, reaching into the past because we reach into the past for all bad memories. So why wouldn't we reach in the past for a good memory to move us forward? So I think that is awesome. Like I would never consider that because we're so stuck on the cycle of what bad happened in our past that we don't focus on the good anymore like we're so surrounded about negativity and stuff like that that we never really really consider how we got through each one of those stages like okay this bad happened but we're here today so we got through it so yeah. we never consider the the part that the end of that part we always remember the beginning but never the end of it like it was a process in there that where we made it by each step because we're standing here today and we're in a better situation so we have to make it through some way somehow we just never sit with it yeah and consider it absolutely and to this day i have massive anxiety ptsd from many things in my life i think last year included big time um but i've started to shift my brain recently into you know every time i start to panic like this is an opportunity the things that happened to you in your past was an opportunity. And the fact that you're still alive, an opportunity had to have happened, right? Like you're saying. And so I'm trying to really shift my brain. I think it could help a lot of women. So when something negative happens, I don't want to say, oh, you know, that was great. You deserved that. I don't mean anything like that because that's no. that wouldn't it would be cruel, no. you know? No. I mean more of a mindset shift so that you no longer become the victim because when you are con continuously reliving and being ashamed or being angry about a situation or even blaming someone else, blaming the situation, you're actually just stabbing yourself. It's almost like you're also your own predator. So to be kind to myself, um, my advice to others, it seems to be working, is to try to reframe that and say, this is an opportunity for me to change my life. This is an opportunity for me to grow. You know, something has been put here and it's an opportunity for me to be stronger than I was yesterday. I totally agree hundred percent with that. I was just talking to someone about that, like that victim mindset and stuff like that. It's like, I was a victim of domestic violence and I don't call myself a victim because of that exact reason. Um, I always call myself a survivor. I made it through, you know what I'm saying? So if I sit in that space of a victim that I will always be, that will always, I always be holding that self, holding that onto myself. Like, oh, you're a victim. So this is what victims do. So you, you have a reason to feel this way. Like, I don't ever want to feel like, oh yeah, I did. Yes, I'm not devaluating what happened to me like yeah this did happen to me but at the same time i do it doesn't have to define me, you know what i'm saying so we allowing the things that happen to us to define who we are and as a survivor that no that word itself says that is is more to life because we survived the situation so that means as a survivor that means we get to continue i get to Absolutely. continue and i don't get to stay here anymore a victim stays they stays because if you're saying victim the victim are st is still locked they're still locked in the basement they still locked there and you're waiting for the cops to bust the door down to let you out yeah, we're nobody's no coming. Locked in the yeah. basement <laughs> we're no yeah. longer locked in the basement waiting for someone to save us we're we're outside of the basement we're we're, we're on the grass we see the sirens we see all of that now it's time to walk towards them you know what i'm saying it's, it's it's, it's our time, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I, I shift, I have to shift that. Like, I no longer call myself a victim. Like, I'm a survivor. I get to continue to work on. Yeah, and it it takes a long time to even do that, mm -hmm. um, to, like, follow up with it every time. You know, it's hard. It can be hard because you want to go back into that feeling so much and you have to control your brain at some point. But, and the other thing I've done to help um, with that, because, you know, the anxiety can be so bad, even while you're, you know, working through it, doing your journaling, everything that you're doing, it's great. It's one foot forward. But I found that I also had lost a part of my creative self. And 
I think that's really important. Like we were talking about women fill their schedules because they're the everything right now. Um, whether it's, you know, trying to be a mother, a worker, you know, a student. Um, so whatever it is, um, we fill that schedule up. And sometimes we don't even allow ourselves to have that creative space or our hobbies anymore. And I was definitely one of those people. Um, so one of the things was traveling, super important to me. As, as soon as I started seeing that I was feeling worse, I started just like booking flights. I knew something was coming. My intuition was like, something's coming. So it's just like, fly here, travel here, do this. My husband's like, huh, we're going to a lot of like two day trips on your days off, you know? And I'm like, eh, just go, please just go with me. Right. Or it's on the bucket list. Mm -hmm. And then, um, also singing has always been important to me. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to put this microphone in my living room. And anytime I want to have a concert, I will sing to the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's that piece of me that I had to remember and and say it's okay like it's that whole like letting yourself be you not growing up so much that you don't even exist because being an adult doesn't mean every single moment you're living for someone else that that cannot be right I don't want it to be right for me I'm making that decision yeah that is true it's like finding an outlet that that helps you deal with life and make sure that outlet is something that you enjoy so that you can explore self more. So you get to explore yourself through your outlet and just hope you refine who you are, reunite with self, like reunite with the person that you were before all this traumatic stuff happened or before this big life change or life shift. Because if we tend to lose ourselves or tend to lose the fun things in life, um, that's when a lot of the sickness and stuff come into because we're we we supposed to play like we are mm -hmm. supposed to play like i know we grow up but play is life you know what i'm saying like we learn through play as kids so if we're as adults that doesn't change we can learn how to shift ourselves and shift the way we perceive life through play you know what i'm saying like oh mm -hmm. That's not as serious as I thought it was because you start to play with yourself. You start to understand yourself a little bit more. It's like, oh, I don't have to be as serious as I think I have to because it's still those things still got accomplished and I'm still playing. Absolutely. We think I, that if we, we have to make a choice. Either we get to play or we get to we have to be adult. We don't get the we don't understand they both coexist in the same space. Yeah. Joy, right? Joy. You're still yeah. allowed to have joy. That's that was one thing I felt like I can say I, I was not understanding, yeah. you know, the reality where as soon as I stepped away from who I was, I was looking at it and going, how were you this person? Like yeah. for so long, my, you know, house of cards was standing so straight and, you know, just one little, tick, it all starts going down and that that's not a good foundation, right? it really has to be a joyous foundation. And so I've changed my personal mindset. And I, I do believe this causes trauma for people. It's changed my personal mindset from being life is all about making money to life is about joy. If money is included in that way to go, right? Yeah. Or whatever your joy is. Yeah, I agree. And the, another thing that people don't realize, they said um, when it comes to careers and, and jobs and life, living life, they say, go into spaces that make you happy so like you shouldn't go to work to work you're going to work to change life to make life you know what i'm saying to change your life you have to enjoy what you do to actually enjoy your life you know what i'm saying so work is it's 90 percent of us have a necessity have to work but that work doesn't, doesn't have to be a place of misery you know what i'm saying it doesn't have to be a place of uncomfortability it could be a place of joy so when we do if we know that we have to work but when you go into those spaces you could make choices to make those spaces a place of joy you know what i'm saying go into careers go into places that is joyful to you like i would love like um in my job i take care of people you know what i'm saying so i do that in my business life and i do that in my work life so i love to help people so i'm happy to go to work i have happy to change people like i'm happy to see the shift in people where i come through and i take care of them. i'm like yeah she wasn't doing that yesterday thanks to me she is so i enjoy that transformation that i allow people to have because of my presence you know what i'm saying so absolutely 
And I'm not sure that, you know, even if you, for me, like I loved my career. I love Airstream. I still work with, you know, in the Airstream realm, but I think it's okay to change, to mm -hmm. outgrow a specific position even, or, you know, it's okay to change. I think in life, um, everything is supposed to change. That is truly to me how we continue evolving and if we don't allow ourselves that change it, maybe not for everybody but just because you've been doing something that long and you did like it doesn't mean it serves the same purpose for you now so That's I true. outgrew that part of me where I was only you know very transactional um a little bit harder right inside and um I, I wanted to see myself in a different light so even if you know, my career follows me. I love sales. I mean, that's, that might always be part of me. I do love that type of transaction. It's just every day going to the same building and, uh, no, it's Groundhog's Day to me. And I just feel like we should be comfortable saying we're done with that Groundhog's Day. And even if you create a new one, uh, experiencing something new, I think is healthy. I, I agree because, uh, just like I'll, just like re with relationships, we outgrow them. They all serve a purpose. Everything in life serves a purpose. It was there for a reason. It, it built something inside of us for a specific reason. And after we hit that benchmark, it sometimes it's time to move on because that purpose or that thing or is no longer serving us in the next version of ourselves. For us to elevate and to move forward in our life experience, we have to shift and Sometimes we don't think that the shift is necessary, but we can tell, even though we think that we are, you can tell when it's time for a shift. You can tell oh, yeah. the resistance of like, I used to, yeah. I, I love this job, but it's something that's not there. I love this person or I love this situation, but it's something that's not there. Absolutely. You, know, I, you can stay there and elevate that situation and uh, transform it into something that you need. Or you can actually, like you said, just let it go. And move mm -hmm. on to the next situation, yo. Mm -hmm. But because even though, like, even relationships, like, we could be in a relationship and, like, oh, this relationship is not giving me what I needed to give because now you have, like, me when I'm healing, like, now my I'm healing and now I need a different level of love. You know what I'm saying? So with that, like, oh, this relationship is no longer serving me. That doesn't mean that this relationship is no longer serving me. I'm not, con I could be not communicating what I need from the relationship so it can serve me you know what i'm saying and that could be in your career and that could be in life sometimes we just need to communicate yeah communicate what we need so that this situation can serve us in our in our, in our next level and if after that communication comes and if it's still not serving it and that's when we kind of know that this shift is it's time to move it's time to move yeah and i i think that i'm one of those people and I'm sure you have other, you know, guests that you talk to. I let the resistance get so intense, but it's like, and one of the things my yoga instructors say is like, do you need a brick house to fall on your head? Yeah. Every time I do it, that comes to my brain. And I'm like, oh, the brick house is here again. You, yeah. You're letting it fall on your head and you're still staying in a situation and it's it's that like misunderstanding of resilience right like oh i can get through this doesn't necessarily mean you stay in a bad situation and i think that happens i i don't currently have like the domestic violence uh things that um can be talked about but i believe in situations where i have had that um you're also facing that like resilience. So like, whether if it's for a child, right. Um, you're like, I can get through it because of this. And really it could, it's actually much scarier in some ways to face it and deal with it. And, and all that fear, like what's going to happen to the child, what's going to happen to my life. What if my neighbors all know, like mm -hmm. uh, my family might be ashamed. Like, what if I actually love him and I'm just not sure. I feel like that's very similar to, a career or similar to um, a health problem that you're not dealing with. Right. Yeah. And I let, I let the health situation get to a point where it, it was bloody in the brain. So that's like, that is ridiculous. Right. So I hope to tell other people, you feel the pain, your body's telling you mm -hmm. evaluate it. Right. And, and don't lie to yourself. Yeah. And that goes back to what you said at the beginning, like the, it's the resistance is the resistance is more, 
about outward. Like where our resistance is coming from outward is now coming from inward because we're so focused on outside of us, outside of us. When we're resisting, we're not worried about us. We worry about how it's going to reflect on other people, what, what other people are going to say, how we're going to affect other people, how me taking care of self is going to affect everyone outside of me. And Absolutely. not worrying about how it's going to affect us, affect the, us as ourselves. And I think the biggest thing is and that's when you know it's time for a shift because yeah. you look at the situation and you see like I'm worried about everything and everyone else. And when when I'm resisting, do I resist? Is, is any of this is this resistance coming from it within me? Like is any of this due to me? No, it's due to what I think other people going to think of me what I'm how I'm not going to be able to follow up for other people or be there for other people because I'm being there for me and that's when you know it's time for a shift <laughs> yeah and you're only one person and if you get yeah. this one opportunity um you know I tend to live spiraling out you know to take care of everything and everyone but you get one this one opportunity that we know for sure we're here um, I think that, you know, because of our history, like we talked about, it, it's hard sometimes to just do what you want to do. But that's why I say keep it light enough to travel, you yeah. know, metaphorically and in real life. Yeah, that that's true. So before we end this episode, is it anything that you would like to tell the listeners that you feel like it's, it's crucial for them to know to help them on this journey? Yeah, I would say that people in life have have just decided right like what when i think we're mostly talking about women right mm -hmm. um what somebody or judge somebody really quickly um and i just would like to say that you never know who might have had a similar experience to you and you never know that there may be some nurture and love there and to not be afraid um to wear some of your heart on your sleeve when you're trying to make a transition and to let people be there for you. Because mm -hmm. that's been one of the hardest things for me is allowing people to really show up for me because I immediately just assume that they won't, right? Because of past situations. Yeah. And we want to get hard and we want to, you know, just like car car that compartmentalize that yes. and <laughs> into a spot, right? Where we're like, okay, they're not going to show up. So I'm, I'm just not going to expect anything from anyone. No love. Right. And, mm -hmm. and just somehow it's going to work out. And I just want to say that you should let people surprise you because it might not be who you think it's going to be that shows up for you, but there's still good people in the world. Yes. And also take each interaction with person as individual interactions. Do not group people together. Um, do not assume. We should not assume. We should just talk to people and see how they're going to show up and see how things will go. And like you said, meet them with empathy, meet people with empathy. Try to think if this was me, how would I want this person to treat me? You know what I'm saying? So having that interaction with people like I'm listening to this person's story. If I was to face this story, do I, would I want someone to judge me or would I want somebody to sit with me? You know what I'm saying? So we really? should have more time sitting with people than actually trying to direct people or tell them what their life should be or judge them or what happened to them. Because not in 90% of the time, people are only telling, the, telling you the part of the story that they feel safe telling. You know what I'm saying? So it's other parts of the story that have not been revealed. So we don't actually know 100% of the backstory. So just Absolutely. give people grace. You know what I'm saying? Give people grace. Absolutely. I love that you said that. My best friend's name is Grace. Um, yeah. In North Carolina. And my last thing that I really, really want to share is I believe in being bold. And I hope every single female that hears this wakes up the following day or on the same day mm -hmm. and says, I'm going to be bold enough to live out my, my dreams. Mm -hmm. And every decision I make is going to be as bold as I want it to. So mm -hmm. Like I said, I believe in being bold. I don't think we should ever tie down our emotions or our wants. I think we should go after it. Go after who you are. A hundred percent. hundred percent. A hundred percent. Now, can you please tell the listeners your information, um, your website, your social media and everything? Absolutely. So on 
Facebook, I use that more than Instagram. I'm really not so much in the era of social media. I'm trying to get better. Um, so, I mean, I barely want to turn on the television. So yeah. that's my type of person, but I'm getting better. But it's Rachel Lynn Adams on Facebook. And that's R-A-C-H-E-L-L-Y-N-N-A-D-A-M-S. Um, you'll be able to find me. It's a picture of me and my husband uh, kissing on our wedding day in our backyard in Texas. So that's special to me. Um, and you can find me at a website. Um, it is airstreamstaystx.com. So airstreamstaystx.com. And I would love for everyone listening to go onto that website, look at the different Airstreams. They're all uh, music, uh, actually music festival themed. I'm going to say way to go, Lana Del Rey, huge fan of Coachella yeah. headlining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So in honor of our music love here in Austin, Texas, the um, owners of RV, uh, the RV spot that is a uh, beautiful place resort um, has decorated their airstreams with the music festival themes, uh, Tomorrowland, Lollapalooza, Bonnaroo goes on and on. Right. So please take a look at those and see how exciting it is. Let me know. We'll hook you up. Have a great day. Keep it light enough to travel. Yeah. Well, that's it for today's episode of Sisters Love Podcast. But before we end, I would love to invite you to our exclusive group. It is called a Sisters Love Support Group. Inside this group, you'll get access to resources. You'll be able to be surrounded with women who understand you. You maybe even get to talk to some of those guests that's on the podcast, okay? And you'll be able to be in a community of women who understand you, who are going through the same situation that you are going through. So if you are a woman who are on the beginning stages of their healing journey, who looking for a safe haven, who is looking for a space and resources to help you on your healing journey, then this is the community for you. To get access to the community, all you have to do is sign up for our guide, which is called How to Create Safety in Your Healing Journey. And once you sign up for it, you'll get instant access to the group because guess what? That's where the guide is at inside the group because it's a group full of resources. You'll get that guide in so much more. So go get the guide, go get the community and be part of a movement of healing and growing and prospering. I love you, my sister. Until next time. Bye.